A little less than two years ago, Sprite shook up the budget sector by introducing the Major 4 SB. It introduced a transverse island bed and an end washroom, a true luxury layout, into the affordable sector. Well, now Sprite's at it again with this. It's the Major 4 EB, and it launches the absolute layout of the moment, the central washroom and a rear island bed into the budget sector. Not that this feels very much like a budget van. Like most Sprites, this one's fitted with a diamond pack and a panoramic front sunroof. And the diamond pack brings with it things like these rather natty alloy wheels with secure wheel lock receivers and the Alco AKS hitch. One thing it doesn't bring, unfortunately, is any kind of external access to the bed boxes. But what that does do is give us a very good look at one of the new features for Sprite in 2017. And that's these sidewalls, which are now GRP instead of aluminium. But the crucial question, of course, is how well does this layout work in a budget range? It's easy to see why so many people opt for that panoramic sunroof. It really does make an enormous difference to this lounge area. It's fantastically sunny, admittedly, on a very sunny day. But actually, this area feels a lot brighter than in some of its more upmarket siblings. That's because there's also two roof lights in the lounge kitchen area, so it is plenty bright enough. At night, it should be pretty good too. We've got a fair amount of perimeter lighting and four spotlights in the lounge, which you don't always get on an entry-level model. I particularly like this trim, which is a carryover from last year. A very nice finish, particularly complemented by these rather fine 70s style curtains. Also, it can adapt to your mood. Over here, we're on bright green because it's a nice sunny day. But if I was feeling a bit more down, we just flip them over and you get black or perhaps black and green. Why not? There's plenty of storage in here too. We've got huge overhead lockers on both sides although they don't have shelves, and the forward end of them, you have to reach through the locker to access. There's no lift up lid, which seems a little bit of a shame. We've got two drawers and a drop down locker here. And of course, this is where you find the slats for the double bed at the front, because these, although they're a good length, they're probably only usable as single beds by children. It's good to see drop down flaps underneath the sofas to access the bed boxes. So there should be plenty of storage space for bedding and indeed visitors clothes. At the front here, we've got a couple of 230 volt sockets, although no 12 volt or USB. And there's no TV point here either because that's over on the sideboard by the entrance door. Above and below it, there are a couple of useful cupboards and it's quite nice to see them angled towards the door. So they're easy to access when you first get on your pitch. So you can grab things like your motor mover remote control. Above the doorway, you'll find the command system. Now that was introduced for flagship models last year but it's now available across the Swift range. And it means that you can control and monitor various functions on your van remotely using a smartphone or tablet. Alongside it, there's a little keypad and that's there for the optional tracker system, which is a good thing to see in an entry level van. The Major 4 EB is only a single axle van. So cramming in a central washroom, an island bed and a decent sized lounge does mean that everything has to be squeezed in fairly carefully. And this kitchen, if anything, is probably the most cramped feeling area. But that said, it's not too bad in terms of space in the kitchen itself. There's a good amount of worktop and a pop-up worktop flat, which is good to see in a budget van. Overhead, we've got the microwave that comes as part of the diamond pack and a couple of cupboards. There's a cutlery drawer down here as well and a small cupboard, but not a vast amount of storage space. But of course, you've got the sideboard on the other side to use. We've got a three burner gas hob, not dual fuel in this case, and a separate oven and grill and a decent sized refrigerator. Sadly, only one socket, but then of course you've got two in the lounge and one above the sideboard. One thing I'm very pleased to see is a vent overhead. So although it's not an omni vent, it's positioned in such a way that it should help to evacuate all of those cooking smells. As I mentioned before, space really is at a premium on a single axle with this layout. But this central washroom does feel pretty spacious. There's a good amount of changing room in the middle. There's lots of room around the loo too, and the wheel arch provides the perfect place to put your spare loo rolls. That sense of space is enhanced by the big smoked window and a small overhead roof light, so it's good and bright. There's a circular shower here on the near side, which doesn't have any shelves to put your shower gel, but the wheel arch in the bottom, although it intrudes slightly into the shower tray, is the perfect place to put them. Dead ahead, we've got a little vanity unit with the second of two bathroom cabinets and a good sized sink, 
and above it an enormous mirror. It's the ideal place to check yourself when you get ready. Take a step back and you get a full length view. Through the his and hers doorways into this master suite at the back of the van you'll find his and hers reading lights, his and hers shelves, drawers, cupboards, his and hers wardrobes, even his and hers windows. It isn't the cheeriest space in the world, the only colour really is this grey padded headboard. There aren't any fabric panels on the walls or anything. But that said, don't forget this is a budget van and there really is everything you could need. Plus, crucially, a real sense of privacy. By having the washroom dividing the back of the van from the front where you might have guests, this really does feel like your own private space. Often these beds retract in the day and I've never really understood why in this layout and indeed in the Sprite it doesn't bother. It's also a good size of bed. I've been able to stretch out on here so it's over six feet long which is better than most in this style. It's a nice bright space too and of course there's vast amounts of storage. Those cupboards don't have any Aldi wet central heating header tank in them because this van has Truma blown air heating. That one's got the table in it which is a bit of a hike forward to the front of the van but it's a relatively light table. There's also of course a vast amount of storage underneath me. You will find the spare wheel in here though which could be a little bit of a pain if you get a puncture because you'll have to lug the wheel through the van and in fact lug back that grubby punctured wheel to store it here. Ahead of you there's a mount for a TV along with all the relevant sockets although same as the front point there isn't actually a satellite connection here only a TV aerial point. Sprite is not only the Swift Group's best-selling brand, but also the UK's best-selling single range of tourers. And it's hard to see the major four EB doing anything but enhancing that. It's not a layout that's for everybody, but if you value privacy when you have guests to stay on your caravan, it's just about perfect. In fact, the biggest problem I can see is that it's most likely to steal sales from its more expensive siblings.